the greater good. The greater good, or Tauva, is the central philosophy that unites all Tao. It teaches that every self-aware being is equal and plays an important part in society. It tells its adherents to put away petty squabbles and unnecessary things to unite for the greater good of the rest of their species and of all other intelligent species in the galaxy. The Tao have no desire to destroy another intelligent species' religion or culture, though it may not mean that they respect their right to live as they please. However, while many embrace this ideology, and even some imperial worlds have willingly joined the Tao Empire, other species fiercely resist adhering to the greater good to pursue their own freedoms, much to the dismay of the Tao, who see these desires as selfish and unenlightened. Now onto the Tao caste system. The Tao employ a caste-based social system that places the good of the many over the good of the few or the individual. In Tao culture, every person is viewed as an essential part of the whole society, though no individual is ever considered more important than the needs of the rest of the society. Social standing is judged primarily by a being standing within a caste, with the suffix la designated the lowest rank in the caste, shazla, fire warrior, fiola, earth worker, porla, water bureaucrat, and the suffix o designated the highest, shas o, fire commander, fio o, earth planner, po o, water ambassador. The castes are as follows. First up, the earth caste, or fio. The earth caste is composed not only of the Tao's laborers and technicians, but also artisans, scientists, and engineers. They are usually credited with the significant leaps in technology that the Tao Empire has enjoyed. The members of the earth caste form the foundations upon which the empire is built. The inhabitants of this caste are generally short and stout of build. The water caste, or poor. The water caste is primarily composed of Tao merchants and diplomats. They are tasked with seeking and maintaining diplomatic relations with the other member species of the empire, as well as maintaining the ease of communication and cooperation between the other castes. The water castes are generally taller and slimmer than other Tao, and favor diplomatic training and social grace over confrontation or combat. They are more capable in communicating in the languages of other intelligent species than most other Tau. From the time when they discover the existence of the Imperium, there are several accounts where water caste ambassadors were dispatched to Imperial worlds, and those worlds accepted the greater good without a fight to become new Tao sets. The Air Caste or Core. The Air Caste of the Tao function not only as messengers, but also as the bulk of the protection fleet and the merchant fleet. The Tao of the Air Caste are even taller and more slender than the Water Caste, with long, skinny appendages and hollow bones. These traits are attributed to their lives lived mostly in low to zero gravity void ships and void stations. This is exacerbated by air cast reluctance, if not outright refusal, to land on planets, as their skeletons have atrophy to the point where injury and broken bones are commonplace when they spend time in a gravity well. 
In the past, during the time of the Montau, before the unification of the Tao tribes, the air cast had membranes stretching between their limbs, which allowed them to glide on air currents. Their pilots are recognized as generally superior to human pilots due to their better fighter craft, though they lack a normal Imperial pilot's level of combat experience. And of course, the Ethereal caste, the Aun. The Ethereals are the political and religious leaders of the Tao. They resemble the fire and water caste physically, but are marked by a diamond-shaped ridge of raised bone in the center of their foreheads. Their origins are unknown, and most will never refuse a request made by an ethereal. They are sometimes also found on the battlefield, but whether as leaders or observers remains to be seen. The leader of the ethereal caste is a Tao named Aun Va, the ethereal supreme and master of the undying spirit who chair the ethereal high council and served as the head of state or Aun O of the Tao Empire. Ethereal Control One of the theories surrounding the Tao concerns the Ethereal's method of political control over others of their species, and how they initially managed to unite a fractured, nomadic species comprised of multiple and mutually antagonistic subspecies constantly at war into a single people and military force. The proposed causes of this range from the psychic to the biological, including that the ethereal's diamond-shaped forehead ridge, an organ unique to that caste's anatomy, produces a set of pheromones that make Tao and to a lesser extent other intelligent species open to suggestion. And now for the Tao caste ranks. The rank of a person in Tao society is second only to the caste they are born into in determining their position in their culture. The ranks are as follows, with the prefix denoting the individual's caste preceding the suffix that determines rank within the caste. First up, we have the Sal. A cadet. This rank is typically given to Tao as soon as they enter the service of any of the castes, where the term might also translate more appropriately as apprentice. Then the La, the first and lowest true rank of Tao society. A fire caste Shaz La would be a standard fire warrior, while an earth caste Fio La would be a manual laborer, and an air caste Kor La a crewman on a Tao void ship. Then the Ui, the second rank among the Tao. A fire caste Shaz Ui would be the leader of a squad of fire warriors, equivalent to an Imperial Space Marine Sergeant, or a Tau battlesuit pilot, while a water caste Por Ui would be a mid-ranking envoy or diplomat. Then the Vre, the third Tau rank. A fire caste Shaz Vre is a battlesuit team leader or bodyguard. An earth caste, Fiovre, would be the foreman of a Tau factory, and an air caste, Korvre, a fighter pilot. Then the L, the fourth and second highest rank, acknowledged as one of high esteem. Fire caste, Shaz El, are sub commanders, essentially junior Tau commanders. Air caste, Kor El, command Voidcraft as their captains, and an Earth caste, Fio El, would be a senior engineer. And of course, Or, 
the highest Tau rank in any caste. An air caste Koro would be the title of a fleet admiral, while a fire caste Shas Or would be a top fire caste field commander. Essentially, a general and a fearsome warrior in their own right, usually placed in command of one or more cadres, or even a contingent. An Aun Or is the highest rank of Ethereal, as Ethereal Supreme and head of the Ethereal High Council, revered by all Tau as the leader of their people. Before the unification of the Empire under the rule of the Ethereals, the four main castes, fire, earth, water and air, were constantly vying for power with each other in the form of different tribes and subspecies. The sudden appearance of the mystical Tau of the Ethereal caste led to the unification under the utilitarian philosophy of the greater good. The Tau are the most open and tolerant of the intelligent star-faring species that we know of. They seem to be the only faction that prefers to settle their differences peacefully when possible. They are appreciative of humans, Eldari and the other intelligent species, but hold their own values to be superior to those of others because they view themselves as seeking to build an unselfish and enlightened society. Their tolerance also extends to themselves, as they recognize even lowly earth caste Fiola workers as being as important to the operation and well-being of the Tao Empire as the fire castes Shazvre battle suit leaders or even the ethereal supreme Aun Or who leads the Empire. Tau Names Tau Names are closely tied with their lives within the Empire. A Tau's full name always starts with their caste and their rank within that caste, followed by the Sept, planetary system, of their birth, followed by their personal name, which is often determined and extended by their notable actions or achievements in life. Thus, the name of the Tau, Shas O Vyur La Shova Caius Montir, would be broken down as follows. Shas, the individual is a member of the fire caste, or who is a high ranking commander and hero, Vyur La, who comes from the sept of Vyur La, and has a personal name translated as being far-sighted, Shova, skilled, Caius, possible variation of Cais, and having seen many battles, Montir, meaning blooded.